Hi, and welcome back to class. This is AODE 4R70W class, part one, lesson four, the final video of part one. In the last lesson, we removed the accumulator and servo assemblies, as well as the selector shaft and the electronic pressure control solenoid. Our goal for this lesson is the removal of all internal drivetrain parts and subassemblies. You'll need these tools, 10 millimeter socket, extension and ratchet, small and medium screwdrivers, mechanics pick, a slide hammer, and a metric threaded bolt to use with it. It's an M10 by 1.5 by 75 millimeter long. I bought this one at Lowe's for about $2. Disassembly begins by removing the front pump and I've repositioned the case upright for better demonstration. If it's too awkward for you to arrange your transmission this way, simply leave it on its side. Use a 10 millimeter socket and remove the seven pump to case bolts. put them into the box. Many transmissions are designed and manufactured with provision for possible repair. Look closely at this bolt hole and this one. Unlike the other five, these two holes are threaded. The only reason the automaker had for tapping the holes is for attaching a slide hammer in order to remove the pump. Not only found on the AOD, but also on the other transmissions made by Ford, GM, and Chrysler, the threaded holes are a convenient courtesy to make repairs easier. Get a slide hammer and the metric bolt. I welded an L-shaped bracket with a bolt hole to mine years ago just for pulling pumps but you could make a U-shaped bracket for yours to temporarily attach the bolt. Thread it in at least half an inch. Use light blows to get the pump moving. Move the bolt to the other hole. Use light force again and the pump should come loose. Lift it out and turn it over. Look for the plastic thrust washer. If it remained in the transmission here on the reverse input drum, pick it up and place it on the pump as you see here. On 2004 and later 4R70Es, this piston assembly and return spring arrangement is different. 
On these models, you'll find a large circular wavy spring and a retainer, which you must pick up and set onto the pump and piston. Set it on the parts bench on its side. Put something against it so that it cannot roll off. If the pump to case gasket remained in the case, carefully peel it out, or if it begins to tear, wear gloves and use a razor blade to remove it. Place it on the pump. There is a small spring steel part inserted here, which dampens noise made by the mechanical diode and the intermediate clutch. Use a mechanics pick to pull it out. Put it with the other small parts. This is the intermediate or second gear clutch pack, which consists of four steel and four friction plates. Use the pick or small screwdriver and lift out this steel plate. Turn it over and note any evidence of heat damage, such as warping or discoloration. Set it down next to the case. Lift out a friction plate. Turn it over and set it down on top of the steel plate. Continue removing a total of four steel and four friction plates and stack them as removed next to the case. Finally, lift out the end plate. Pick up the intermediate steels, frictions, and end plate. And place them in the same order as removed onto the pump, like so. Use a screwdriver in one hand to help remove the overdrive band. The blackened area here is not normal and indicates the band was slipping. We'll discover why later. This band is ruined and will have to be replaced but for now, set it in this area on the bench. Remove the reverse input and forward clutch drums by pulling out on the input shaft. We'll inspect them closer in part two, but for now, place them with the overdrive band here. The forward clutch hub and a thrust bearing come out next. Pull them out and note how the bearing is installed against the hub. The wider bearing race and lip go toward the hub. It will not fit the other way.
The next part to remove is another unique thrust bearing, which is unlike the first one. Notice how the inner lip centers the bearing in the drive shell. It can only be installed one way. Turn them over and set them here in the same order as removed. Remove the intermediate shaft by pulling it out. Set it here. Lift the drive shell out next. Turn it over and set it over the forward hub and thrust bearings. Pull out the sun gear. Depending on model and year, there are three different styles of thrust bearing located here. Leave it on the shaft. Turn it over and place it onto the drive shell. The center support is retained by this snap ring. Notice how the end gap is positioned in this area and that one end is just below the overdrive band anchor pin. It can be removed by hand. Set it around the drive shell. In order to pull the center support out, a component called the case silencer must be removed. It's located here and preloads the support in this direction to prevent a clacking noise when placing the transmission into drive. There are two styles. One is a U-shaped type found in 2004 and later for our 70Es, and another earlier coil type like the one here. I suggest using two screwdrivers to get it out. Pry up with one in the coil and another under this end. Put the silencer with the small parts. To remove the support, rotate it back and forth while pulling up. Turn it over and set it as removed over the drive shell. We need to pull the planetary gear assembly out next. It's quite heavy and I use both hands to lift it out. As you do this, try not to disturb the roller and springs in this area. Lift it out. Do not turn it over. Place it like so onto the bench. Remove the reverse band by pulling up and out on the side opposite the anchor pins.
There is also a snap ring located here which acts as a shelf to support the reverse band during the assembly of the transmission. It can be removed by hand, lifted out. Set the band here and put the snap ring in the box. The last assembly to remove is the output shaft and ring gear along with the direct clutch. I've repositioned the case on its side to make this easier. I'll support the ring gear inside with one hand and push on the output shaft with the other. Finally, make sure you remove the output hub to case thrust bearing. Place it on the shaft as removed. Set this assembly here on the parts bench. Well, that's about it for this lesson and part one of this class. We've reached our goal to remove everything from the case and to place parts and sub-assemblies neatly on another bench. In part two, we'll move forward with an introduction to overhaul kits and other replacement parts, discuss why this transmission failed as we work on the sub-assemblies, and finally, reassemble the transmission to like new condition. When you're ready, Meet me in part two, lesson one.